This is Zachary Horn with Clean Code Studio, Clean Code, Clean Life. Today, let's learn some Vue. All right, guys. In our ninth installment of learning Vue.js in 2019, we're going to go over the last data option, and that is props. Now, props is a very important data option. It is actually how we begin to pass information between components. Specifically, props are meant to pass information from a parent component down to a child component. So if we go back to our browser where we have our base form application, we go to our base form. Well, our base form doesn't have any children components. So how about we take this button right here? Buttons are pretty ubiquitous. They're pretty generic across sites. So maybe we want to make that a component that we can reuse. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this component. Or sorry, we're going to remove this button element that is not a component. And once we save that, you'll see that that's removed. The second thing we need to do is we need to create a new file and we're going to create our template. This is going to be our child component and our child component is just going to be this base button. We're just going to copy it over and then we're going to create this script and we're going to do script equals export default and then we're just going to name this base button just like that. So there are really three steps, I guess four if you really think about it, to registering and using props. The first is creating a parent component. Second is creating the child component, importing that child component into the parent component. So we just created our child component. Now we need to import it into our parent component and use it. So all we're going to do is we created our base button child component. So we're going to do import base button. We're going to do from, and then we're going to do dot dot slash buttons slash base button. So we're going to import it, and then we're going to register it as a asset or as a specifically as a component asset within our base form. So the base button component is a uh, is a asset a component asset within our base form component so if you notice we still haven't um, done anything really we haven't used it we haven't used our child component in our parent component the form is sorry the base button still does not exist there so once we import our base button and we register it as a component asset all we need to do is just add it to our template base button which is just going to line up uh, with this components base button and obviously you can see the case difference. And of course, right when we add it, it adds the new save button. So now that we have a parent component and a child component, we can begin the process of registering our component. And just to make this a little simpler, I'm actually gonna break this down um, a little bit further. And I am going to drag this base button component over here. So we have our base form, and now we have our base button. And just to make this even a little bit simpler, I'm just going to add a comment here that's going to say child component. And then we're going to add a comment here that says parent component. So just like that. So step one to actually registering a prop after you have a parent and child component is to add this props key to the child view instance. You register props in the child. Now, props have three options. And let's say we want to, our prop's going to be just text. We just want to be able to output any text there. We don't want it to be any specific text. Buttons are generic. They have generic text. So we're going to create this text prop. And this text prop is going to have four options. One is going to be the type. Now, the type is a string. Types can have an array of types, or they can have a single type. In this case, it's just going to be a string. So that's option one of registering a prop. Option two is required. Is the string required? Eh, let's say false because option three is default. What's the default value of our prop? And we'll just say save button or save form. So if no prop is passed from the parent to the child, the default is going to be save form. And then the last option that you have when registering a prop or prop being text is a validator method. Now, the validator method is just a method that says when a prop is passed, then the length of that string has to be greater than zero. So you just can't pass an empty string. Um, and if you do pass an empty string, then it will just air out and let you know that, hey, that failed the validator. So when you register a prop, you have these four options. We registered our prop text. The four options within the text prop is type, required, default, and validator. So that's step one. We registered the prop within our child component, and we are now using that prop, which is defaulting to save form, just like we would a computed property or data, just using the mustache template syntax. So step two, how do we pass 
information from the parent to the child using props. Well, you actually use an HTML attribute and Vue knows that if we say, hey, we want text to be cool button, click me, and we just set it to text, well, because we registered it as a prop, once we save it, Vue automatically knows, hey, cool button, text me. Also notice that if we pass in an empty string, invalid prop custom validator check failed because we are requiring the string length to be greater than zero. If we just say A, string length is greater than zero, then we reload our page so you can see that error go away. It all works properly. So that is how you begin to pass a information from the parent to the child using props. Step one, create the child component. Step two, register the child component import it and register it to the parent. Step three, use it in the template. And step four is pass it. Pass information via the parent to the child um, in the prop as an HTML attribute. Now, like all other data attributes, if you remember, everything depends on data. Data is the source of truth. Everything comes back to data. This includes props. This right here is what we call a static prop. But what if we wanted to bind it to I don't know, parent form title. So maybe we want to go up here, we want to say save, and then or let's use our computer property, capitalized title. So we want to say save, and then whatever the prop value is. Well, if we want to bind the prop to parent data, then all we need to do is add this colon, which is just a shorthand for vbind, text equals, this text prop is going to equal capitalized title. And if you remember from previous videos, all the capitalized title does is it just takes this form title, and it capitalizes it. And so if we use this colon and we bind it, and then we go back and we save our, our page, now it's going to be save form. And da, 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 da. why did that not work? Capitalized title, capitalized title. Ah, because we are not returning our title. There we go. Um, and that's just gonna be base form, right? And all we want it to do is say, hey, save the base form. And so the default is save form, the required is false, the type is string, and if we do a hard reload, it's just going to be base form because that's what the text says. And so this mustache braces, just like computer properties, just like data, references the text prop. The text prop can reference parent data, AKA it reacts to parent data. Now here's where props get tricky. Let's say we just go and we get the base button view instance. So we'll just go right here and we'll just do copy JS path, just like this. And we're gonna do dot view to get the instance, to get the view instance of the base button. So we'll do base button equals that. And what if we did base button dot text equals updated form button text? What happens? Well, this will work. This will work, but notice we will get an error. It did work, even though that's an ugly button, but it says avoid mutating a prop directly since the value will be overwritten whenever the parent component re-renders. Instead, use a data or computer property based on the prop's value. So basically all this is saying is don't directly mutate, change, or update props through the child. The reason being is because props should depend on parent data. Everything depends on data. That's what makes reactivity system work. Data is the source of truth. This includes props. Even though it's in a different component, it's still this text prop still needs to depend on the form title. Or, in this case, the text prop depends on capitalized title, which is a computer property that depends on form title. Everything goes back to data. Data is the source of truth. This allows you to do it, but you should never, ever, ever directly mutate a prop or it will mess up your reactivity system. So that was how we pass information from a parent down to a child. In our next view lesson, we're gonna go over events. And that is actually how we will tell this base button, hey, hey, we need to tell the base form to update the form title so the prop will reactively update according to the form title update, and then the prop will update without us needing to directly mutate it. So basically to update a prop, we just need to send a message an event and notify. We Specifically, we need to emit an event that notifies the parent to change the form title text, which will then update the prop because the prop reacts to form title. So that's, uh, that's props in a nutshell, guys. Um, thanks for listening. If this was helpful, like and subscribe. Simple.